Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this presentation. Uh, I'm Takanori Suzuki and today I will talk about uh, what we learned from creating OSPO at Cybertrust Japan. Uh, this is agenda. Uh, at first I will talk about me and then I will talk a bit about my company Cybertrust Japan and then I will talk why we need to make uh, OSPO and how was the situation before OSPO. Um, after launching the o OSPO uh, and when we make the OSPO, uh, what we learned from the Tudor Group OSPO resources. And then uh, I will talk about uh, what changed after creating OSPO and the future plan and the conclusion. Uh, about me, uh, I'm Takanori Suzuki. Uh, I'm leading uh, Cybertrust Japan OSPO as chief open source officer. And I'm also uh, an open source engineer. And uh, about open source and me, uh, when I was a university student in 1999, uh, I read the Cathedral and the Bowser essay, and I learned uh, about open source at that time. And uh, 2007, uh, I joined to joined the Cybertrust Japan. Uh, at that time, it was uh, Miracle Linux, and worked for Miracle ZBX and Miracle Linux as open source engineer, and currently working also for the uh, Miracle Linux development system. And this is my company, Cybertrust Japan. Uh, as you see, uh, there's three sections. And uh, left side is uh, uh, original Cybertrust Japan's uh, businesses like uh, authentication or securities. And the right one is uh, originally come from the Miracle Linux, uh, it merged to uh, Cybertrust in 2017. And it has a, a Linux and open source business. Uh, as you see, there's some logos uh, uh, like Miracle ZBX, it is a system monitoring software. And the bottom, in the bottom, uh, there is a uh, embedded Linux distribution, EM Linux, and uh, server Linux distribution, Miracle Linux. So, uh, and there is also the IoT section. Uh, it's uh, based on the security technology and open source technologies. So, uh, currently, our company uh, is based on the open source and security. So, and we have uh, some open source product like <coughs> yeah. and I will talk about how was the situation before the OSPO uh, about open source culture and open source business mind. Uh, as I told, uh, the current Cybertrust Japan is the result of the merger of two companies, Cybertrust Japan and Miracle Linux, uh, open source company. So uh, there was some gap in open source mind. Uh, so uh, we needed to keep and extend open source culture and open source business mind <coughs> because, uh, you know, there is some different people coming from different culture, so we need to uh, sometimes explain why we need to contribute to open source or how, why we need to talk with community people. So sometimes uh, we need to talk such things in our company. Actually, before that, uh, we had, uh, uh, I, I was in Miracle Linux, so uh, in Miracle Linux, it was actually natural thing to do open source. So 
uh, actually, I, I didn't mind so much about why I have to communicate with open source community or why I have to contribute to open source. But uh, now we need to uh, have some uh, system as a company to communicate uh, with each other uh, to contribute and use open source. And uh, as I said, uh, it, it was naturally so uh, our open source culture was mainly kept by the branchyard open source engineers. So each developer uh, contributes a source code to each open source uh, software. Uh, it actually it's, it's natural thing and uh, we didn't so much <laughs> talk each other and, and report uh, just we found some bug in open source software and just contribute so but actually it's a bit uh, uh, branched and not a system as a company uh, so we need to build a system as a company to keep it. And some workers and management people thought uh, open source was only about technology and not about business and or compliance or security. So we had a bit uh, gap in the mind. And uh, open source strategy uh, <coughs> uh, about joining uh, open source development or event uh, often individually in each section or each engineer decision. So uh, actually we just did such things because we wanted or we need. So, but actually we can co cooperate more with each other and we need to do such things. And about open source compliance, uh, some people have enough open source license knowledge, but others not. So uh, there are some issues. So my response to the, these issues, uh, as I said, said uh, I I've read the uh, Cathedral and Baza and the, especially the Magic Card Run. Uh, it's written about the uh, open source business and uh, open source community relationship. So uh, I already know the open source can go uh, open source community and uh, open source business can go together. So uh, I need to um, find or make some model or guide to do the such open source uh, system in our company. And in 2021, I found the uh, Linux Foundation and to the group uh, OSPO resources. Uh, and you know, the in such to the group uh, OSPO resources, there's many uh, guides useful guides and resources to apply open source to companies, actually also for to our company. And it suggests, also suggests the Cathedral and Baza as one of the must read books. So actually I thought this is what I was searching. So uh, OSPO is what we need. So we created the OSPO. And we launched the OSPO this year, 2022. Uh, this is a press release. Uh, actually, this is translated uh, <coughs> uh, June 23rd. And what we learned from to the group OSPO resources, uh, as you see, uh, there's many guides and uh, case studies uh, in such guide, uh, there is uh, how to make the ecosystem of the 
community or how to hosting the open source project or the compliance or also about open source commercial ecosystems. So uh, OSPO is covering not only about the technology thing or contributing code. Of course, the contributing code is the most important thing, I, I think, but the <coughs> it's uh, useful for business and security and compliance. So this is good for us. And also the many case studies is important. And also the this training module, uh, actually I'm still reading this and uh, not yet finished, but uh, it's interesting because there is a open source business strategy course. Uh, so if we can share the which kind of open source existing and uh, we can know the open source business model uh, common sense. So uh, we can talk more easier uh, in our company. So I think it, it's so uh, good uh, training modules. So uh, OSPO is not only for technology, uh, but also for culture, business and compliance and so on. So and uh, there is a stages <coughs> of uh, the OSPO. Uh, the <coughs> this is the uh, picture. Uh, often the to the group introduce uh, this picture and uh, for making OSPO more effective. Uh, we need to collaborate on open source more strategically, not only individually. And <coughs> by co co collaborating uh, more, uh, we can uh, contribute uh, more strategically or uh, getting more leadership in open source. So it will become a benefit for company. So this kind of uh, guide or uh, resources is uh, useful, actually useful for us. Uh, after creating OSPO, Uh, we defined the five goals of, uh, of our OSPO. Uh, first one is uh, assisting in development, sharing and implementing open source utilization strategy. Actually, this is the what I'm doing and the, these five goals is actually this, this one. Uh, and second goal uh, is uh, working with open source communities to keep uh, and extend effective contribution. And third one uh, is promoting uh, effective use of open source in products and services. Uh, it means uh, process development, uh, how to apply the open source to our products and services. Uh, <coughs> And fourth one is uh, keeping and extending open source license compliance. Uh, fifth one is uh, promoting open source culture in the company. And uh, this is our OSPO activity fields. Uh, actually, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, the uh, most important thing in open source is uh, contributing and uh, writing code, the open source activities. Uh, that is the center part box. Uh, but uh, actually, for doing that, uh, uh, just doing that is not uh, easy to do. Actually, uh, making our culture or training or supporting the new developers or collaborating with uh, other 
sections uh, needed and actually uh, bridging the open source activity and business strategy is uh, important. <coughs> Without such thing, uh, it's uh, difficult to continue or uh, getting help or uh, difficult to getting budget. So for doing uh, open source contribution and activities, uh, we need to these green boxes. Actually, the blue one is uh, what we will get by these activities. So uh, these are our OSPO activity fields. And I uh, mapped the five goals I talked uh, to these uh, activity fields. The first one uh, go about uh, assisting in development and sharing and implementing open source utilization strategies. <coughs> uh, this one will affect uh, everything about uh, about the open source things in our company. So this is the first thing and it will affect everything in our company. Uh, so actually uh, the writing or uh, making the these five goals is uh, uh, what I am doing and I actually still currently uh, building uh, the strategies. <coughs> and next one uh, is working with open source community to keep and extend effective contributions. Uh, we could uh, keep the contributing to kernel CI and CIP and other open sources. And one of the member is uh, now kernel CI TST member and mem maintenance. And also we as assisted to boost open source activity about our open source product. Um, so, for example, we started Miracle Linux user meetup and uh, made new wiki for getting more uh, users of Miracle Linux distribution. <coughs> and also, we encouraged EM Linux team, uh, it's embedded Linux distribution, uh, to attract and gather more interest. <coughs> and not only joined open source events, but actively participated. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we were joining the open source event uh, individually, but uh, or just joining and not uh, being sponsored. But uh, in this year, uh, Open Source Summit uh, Europe 2022, uh, we had a session about Kernel CI and we sent a uh, developer uh, about the Kernel CI and the proof of paper was accepted. And this event, uh, Open Source Summit Japan, uh, uh, we encouraged management people to sponsor the event and actually uh, we became a gold sponsor of this event and uh, we sent uh, three speakers, including me, uh, to this event. And also the another guy uh, talking, talk, will talk at uh, OpenSF Day. So actually four speakers. And next one is uh, promoting effective use of open source in products and services. Uh, uh, as I told, told uh, we are now starting an uh, OpenSSF related team. Uh, we are ass assisted to start the team, improve uh, collaboration with each, uh, each section. Actually, that OpenSF team uh, originally started uh, in the embedded Linux 
section, but actually, you know, the open source security is so much important and it's not only about uh, embedded Linux system. So uh, now we are involving the many sections and, and uh, because uh, also uh, we could talk with uh, marketing or uh, some um, other people and we, we could join the open source security summit Japan and we could uh, join in the discussion and also we could involve our uh, authentication section it, it's originally the uh, previous cyber trust Japan section and uh, so they someone knows open source but not so much uh, so we are involving them <coughs> to join the uh, this open source open SSF team uh, because there is a Sigstar project Sigstar project is about uh, code signing so such uh, authentication section team is so much imp interested in the this Sigstar project so we involve them and next one is uh, keeping and extending open source license compliance <coughs> Uh, we started internal open source license study meeting with the legal section so we could also uh, involve the legal section and uh, actually also tomorrow uh, no after tomorrow uh, uh, there is a open compliance summit uh, our legal section member will also go that conference so I think it's going good uh, to involving them and uh, we also assi assisted to start cross-path company s team <coughs> and s is also an uh, important thing uh, recently and originally it, it started as security section and embedded system se section but uh, they were working individually in each section so we need to uh, make communicate each other and so we could make such cross company team because of the also uh, we could have a connection to talk to each other <coughs> and about uh, the next one the promoting open source culture in the company uh, we started, we could started start open source contribution assisting project. So, uh, because uh, we can teach each other uh, for how to contribute open source or teaching uh, the experience. Uh, because because by such things, new developer can be. Uh, open source contributor more faster so <coughs> we started such project and also we started internal technical cultural meeting we can talk casually about open source experience or contribution <coughs> and open source activities uh, became more encouraged by our company so for example we praise uh, uh, active open source engineers like uh, the kernel CI person uh, is uh, now praised uh, because of uh, the person became a kernel CI TSC member and maintainer and also some another guy uh, became a, a PyCon JP chairman so that person also got prized so we are encouraging uh, engineers to do more open source activities and also we are encouraging members to join open source events and supporting the cost uh, actually because before that uh, each uh, developer uh, went the uh, open source event 
by themselves, by their money, because actually, because they wanted to go, uh, but uh, actually, we said, uh, actually, we need to support them because that is becomes our company's profit. So <coughs> we became to support them. So this is a progress status of uh, in our OSPO activity field. Actually, uh, everything uh, already checked is, anyway, we need to continue. So it's not finished. Uh, actually, we need to continue. Uh, but <coughs> in many fields, uh, we could do many things, uh, making community, uh, bridging the open source activity and business strategy or such things. And uh, still, but there is some boxes we need to do. Uh, <coughs> so this is the status. Uh, future plan, uh, actually, I wrote future plan, but uh, actually, this is issues. <laughs> issues to solve, uh, future issues. Uh, so uh, there are some issues. Uh, because uh, OSPO is uh, actually going well, uh, because uh, many sections uh, request uh, ask us to how to join uh, open source community or how to do the open source activity or also the management people said uh, how to uh, use the open source for new business. For example, actually uh, open source SSF, SSF is, is we are trying to uh, concentrate. Uh, so actually, uh, we got many requests from many sections. So actually it's going good, but in some aspects it's, uh, we need more human resources for expanding OSPO activity in our company. So it's a kind of happy problem, but it's still a problem. So uh, we need to allocate more OSPO members hours uh, is needed. So and um, also the open source knowledge gap in our company. Uh, actually, we are doing some supporting project, but still there is a uh, gap. So we need to keep uh, having such project and adding more uh, training course or using the training course in Linux Foundation or the, the training module. Uh, still thinking about this, and also uh, I, I'm think thinking about how our OSPO should be as a company owning the open source product and communities like Linux Linux and EM Linux because uh, you know uh, often the uh, open source uh, consuming open source is most easy way is uh, consuming and. Sometimes uh, we found find the bug we contribute to that open source uh, or get in pre presence in the committee, but uh, in <coughs> hosting the open source products or communities is uh, in opposite side. Uh, we have to uh, attract people to join our uh, community or uh, attract people to use our product. <coughs> uh, so actually we are now uh, building the communities for Miracle Linux and uh, perhaps also the EM Linux. So uh, still we are thinking about how we should be. <coughs> These things are uh, issues to solve. So. Anyway, uh, as a conclusion, uh, these are conclusion. Uh, uh, the to the groups uh, OSPO documents are fundamental resources for implementing OSPO. Um, Cyber Trust Japan is improving OSS contribution by OSPO. Um, Cyber Trust Japan OSPO is 
covering technology, culture, business, compliance, and so on. <coughs> okay, so that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, do you have any questions? I think that uh, uh, it's a little bit difficult to build the OSP team for a small organization. So, do you think OSP tasks can be outsourced? Uh, outsourcing in our company or outside of comp company, you mean? Uh, if you can, uh, あ、まあ、so, uh, of course, perhaps uh, uh, some kind of uh, task can be uh, outsourced. And actually, uh, we need uh, help from uh, other people, outside people, because uh, at least for us, uh, we are still searching the what is uh, good for OSPO. So, uh, outsourcing hmm, is uh, one of the options, but I think still uh, some essential part is still needed in the company, I think. Is it okay for your question? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is, how did you secure the legal team's involvement? Do you have someone from the legal team working with you in the OSPO full time? Or is it dedicated a certain percentage, like they, they work 10% on OSPO matters, and is it the same people in the legal department, or is that you know, whoever is available at the time if you need help? Uh, currently, uh, there Part of their time is uh, will be used for the OSPO, but uh, actually uh, not yet so much using for OSPO. And but anyway, anyway, uh, full-time OSPO member is not always the best. I think because uh, bridging each section is uh, important for OSPO. So uh, doing. For example, doing the legal section work and also OSPO work is good for bridging each section. So I think, uh, of course, uh, actually <laughs> we uh, we have to have m too many things to do, so we need more uh, help. But uh, still, uh, mm, doing both section work is, I think, is better doing OSPO. Is it okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I see. Okay. Thank you.